Welcome to the Buckskin Gulch of Southern Utah. A sizable drainage that comes off the Kaibab Plateau, North Rim area of the Grand Canyon. And then it drains down this big ravine here. Eventually it goes into the Buckskin Gulch. Many of you have probably visited where it starts cutting through the red Navajo sandstone and forming the world's longest and most continuous slot canyon. That's a few miles downstream, but we're here in the upper portion of it, uh, out here doing a little bit of rock climbing. And we're here to look at this really cool formation. This is the same rock that makes up the rim of the Grand Canyon. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey out here on a little rock climbing trip with some family and friends. I uh, thought I'd put a little video together here while we're climbing on the Kaibab limestone and show you some of the cool features, what its characteristics reveal about the, its geologic history, and just take a look at what we can see in this area. So here you get a pretty good look uh, at the Kaibab limestone. It's a bit of a, a sandy limestone, and one of the more characteristic things it has in it are these big uh, blobs, nodules, if you will, of chert that often stick out in relief. Here's a better example over here of the chert, pieces of chert that are sticking out in relief from uh, the limestone here. So it's a sandy limestone. It represents a period when the ocean was inundating this portion of the Colorado Plateau here in Western North America. Here we see a paleogeographic map showing the regional geologic setting that was taking place in Western North America during the Permian period, about 270 million years ago. The yellow star shows the location of the Buckskin Gulch there, right near the southern uh, border of Utah with Arizona. You can see over here off to the east, the eroded ancestral Rockies were supplying sediment into this shallow tropical seaway and that supplies some of the sediment we see in the Kaibab limestone. So this just sets the stage for the Kaibab limestone's depositional environment, this shallow uh, tropical seaway here in Western North America. And at the same time, we had a developing subduction zone along the western margin that was going to play a big role moving forward with uh, accreting material and building North America's west coast. So limestones in the deserts of the southwest actually form cliffs. This is a big cliff forming unit. What's what makes up the rim of the Grand Canyon? You might be able to pick out up here some of the bolts, some of the hardware uh, that are used. Here it is over here for uh, climbing this area. So you can see some of the a little bit of chalk down here and some of the bolts that are placed for protecting uh, the climbers as they go up some of these faces. Another climb here next to this big wide crack goes up, but it's really good rock for climbing, although the chert in places can make it exceptionally kind of sharp and uh, a little bit rough on the hands, but it does lend itself to having great Footholds. Here's another little zone with all these big chert nodules sticking out of the rock. Uh, in places, those nodules can be uh, weathered out and they can leave in the rock pockets. So in places where there are some of the rock climbs, you might see something like this, where you can see all the holes in the rock, all these pockets that form these really great handholds when we're climbing these faces. Uh, and this one has just like this dark varnish on it. So there's some iron oxide, maybe some manganese oxide that's forming this, uh, this dark varnish that even coats some of the chert nodules there. Pretty fantastic. All right, so we're gonna head up this route here and hopefully along the way while I'm climbing with the camera, which is not easy or fun, uh, check out and take a look at some of the cool features here in the Kaibab limestone, like these chert nodules. So we're going to, as best we can, give you a view of this lower part of this climb where it's not too difficult with the camera. So here we go. Going up.
Let's see. So we've gone from the chert nodules. Here's our first bolt here. You can see the sort of sharp pitted nature of the limestone here. This is what's called karst weathering. And you also can see some of the big holes, what we call wacos in the rock, these big dissolution pockets where groundwater has dissolved out some of the limestone and makes for really good handholds. So move over here to the left. The videography may be terrible, but we'll stop along the way and get some good pictures and video as we go. Nice big horn here. Here's the second bolt on the climb. Looking up, you can see some of the chert nodules now starting to stick out in relief. Like balls. That one's about as big as a baseball there. And if we pull over to this left side, really nice view of all the the chert nodules in the limestone. And again, just how big some of these are. Um, these all form in the ocean, uh, silica marine organisms with silica exoskeletons just precipitating out of the seawater and forming these, these sort of blobs and rounded forms. We'll go up a little higher. Here's one sticking out. Sometimes you can see a little bit of fossils here on this one. Maybe on the bottom end, if we can zoom in a bit. Let's try this right here. Here we go. Maybe there's a couple little like bryozoans in here. Looks like maybe another, here we go. Another piece of fossil material on the chert nodule. So looking up at the rest of the climb, so we'll go up a little bit farther. We've got our trusty belayer done at the bottom. First time climbing with a handheld camera. And then you can see there's this zone here. That's maybe like the last chert nodule for the most part. And then the climb changes character quite a bit. The rock color is different. And instead of these chert nodules that stick out, we see fewer of those. And the climb switches more to pockets, big places where the limestone has dissolved through. And there are big pockets in the rock. Here's another chert nodule here, another bolt. But then we start getting one more move here. Uh, pockets like this kind of handhold. So you get this one, you can see that one just above me there with um, the chalk there. And really it looks like you have the chert nodule inside it and the dissolution's gone on around it. And then sometimes these chert nodules actually fall out or get weathered out of the rock. So from here on, it gets pretty tricky. So we'll go ahead and put the camera away, finish the climb, and then we'll do a little scene from the top. All right, we made it. Here's the top anchor, at the top of the climb. A little bit of the view here from this ledge on the Kaibab limestone. And looking back down the climb, all the way to the bottom, maybe about 60, 70 feet or so. Pretty sweet. But yeah, you can see again this real pitted nature of this sandy limestone. And up at the top, you do get more of uh, the chert that forms in the limestone. So there's sort of this middle section that's more blank in terms of the chert. 
Zoom in there. Anyhow, good stuff. Wanted to show some of the fossils here in the Kaibab limestone as well. If we uh, look closely here, this is actually a brachiopod. So this is a uh, shelled invertebrate that was very common in the Paleozoic when these rocks were deposited. So we have that fossil there. And the other one I saw was an impression of a shell in one of the uh, concretions. So hopefully you can see the pattern in that right there. And again, I think that's another brachiopod shell. You can see the, the ridges on the shell um, <clears throat> embedded here in the, the chert nodule. But yeah, fantastic stuff. More of the these fun chert nodules that stick out. It's a great texture. And again, even a lot of this grit in here, this sand to fine pebble-sized material, a lot of this is actually uh, fossil material. That looks like another... Might even be a shell right there in that crack. Another one there, and then that looks like the edge of a crinoid. Another little crinoid there. There's these little donut-shaped things. These are the stems of invertebrates that live in the ocean. So just full of fossils, these limestones here from the Permian. Um, here in Buckskin Gulch, right on the edge of the uh, Kaibab Uplift that forms the North Rim of the Grand Canyon. And we're gonna head out now. I gotta grab the stuff. We're done climbing for the morning. We're gonna get some lunch at the truck and then go on up to, or down I guess, to the main part of the Buckskin Gulch and hike through the Slot Canyon there. Well, thanks again for joining me on this fun little adventure. I wanted to just blend a little bit of uh, climbing with geology. Actually, one of the viewers out there asked that I do a video on something like that. So I thought we'd throw that together. Hope you learned a little bit about the Kaibab limestone, its depositional environment, um, the fossils that it contains, and also a little bit of the features that form in the limestone that allow for us to climb it. Not only does it form great cliffs um, of rock, but there's actually features within the rock, part of its geologic history, that allow us to ascend the rock and climb it and uh, have a fun mental and physical challenge. So thanks again for your support of the channel. Thanks for uh, liking and subscribing this. And there's donation links underneath the video description if you're so inclined. And we'll see you out there next time. Thanks so much. Take care.